I got into music to be an artist, not to be a producer. And I fell into producing as a means to an end. About six or seven years ago, I realized you could make money at it. And that was better than working at, you know, I think uh, pottery. I was working in a warehouse at the time. So <laughs> I was like, I was opening boxes and I was like, my buddy, one of my friends was, was uh, producing demos for professional songwriters, just demoing their songs for like 400 bucks a track. And I was like, 400 bucks a song? No way! <laughs> Sweet! And so I started pedaling. You know, I sold my car, bought a bunch of recording equipment, started producing demos. To have it coincide at the same time is really bizarre. But I'm thrilled because, you know, One Republic, ha having this happen and this like, goal and dream being realized for both Zach and I, I mean, we started this about five, four or five years ago, this was the whole point. The point of all of everything else I've done with other artists was this, was to get here. So, um... The cool thing is, is that one is fed into the other. Like, the only way I made a living writing, producing for other people is if I wrote hits, if I wrote, you know, songs that could get on the radio, that could, that could grab, connect with people. So I took that same approach to every song on our record and was like, we can't have a bad song. I was like, just, you know, paranoid about it. We can't have a bad song on this record. It has to be 1 through 12. <laughs> and so I, I uh, lyrically and melodically applied the same approach. So having, having producing and the band work has been... Uh, you know, beyond what I could hope for. Tim uh he's a bit, cr I mean, he's a bit mad. He's a bit crazy. He's in, in a good way. Definitely a musical genius. Uh, he's a guy you want to be around. When he's, in, when he's in a great mood, he's the funniest human being on the planet. He could have his own sitcom. When he's not in a good mood or focused on music, like, get out of the way. So it's, 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 it's kind of two extremes. I, I've known him for six or seven years and worked with him. I used to co-produce stuff and write stuff uh, with him back in the day. And <clears throat> then I branched off. We started One Republic, which is me going in a totally opposite direction from, you know, obviously at that time he was doing more urban stuff. We started doing a rock thing because that's what I wanted to do. He heard Apologize. I'd sent him the demo of it, and he was just like, oh, my gosh, I want to, at some point, like, however this song can somehow, I can remix it or do be a part of it on any level. I'd love to do that. We had been through enough hard knocks at that point that having to say, look, you know, I just want to, I want to basically put a spotlight on your songs because I think you have hit songs, and it, right now it's just on the Internet, and it's, it's ridiculous that they, you know, that they're not out yet. So that's really what he did. He sped up the process for us, like, he saved us a good more. year or two yeah. of more because we've already been doing it for four or five <laughs> years. He saved us another one or two years of just like trudging through the the yeah. the wasteland of <laughs> I don't know, of the our muck and mire. of our nothingness. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was really cool. I mean, as far as apologize goes, you know, he he didn't change the song at all. He just Timberland affied it. He just added a little beat and made it a little more uh, worldwide accessible. Like we're getting audiences now that that we wouldn't have gotten with the original version. So it's really cool. And we're gonna, we'll probably do a couple more collaborations with him on this record. I mean, the album's done, but he wants to remix a couple more songs. And My favorite changes, but, but for now it's Stay, which is one of the last ones that we wrote. It's the first and, song on the record? Yeah, first song on the record. Same. It was just one of those, it, it was one of those songs, we, you know, we were all together and um, we had uh, Brent, who's a new bass player, cello player. And uh, it was one of the first songs we wrote all as the current band that we are. and. Um, it was uh, one of the songs that just takes on its own personality and almost writes itself. It starts off really, really slow and melodic, and just by the end of the song, it's it, everything is just going crazy. It's just like it, at its peak, and, and uh, every time I listen to that, I still get goosebumps. Yeah. My m my favorite two songs are um, "Say," the first song on the record, and "Stop and Stare," which is the second single. You know, the songs that are my favorite are the ones that that never burn on me, that I never get tired of. And Stop and Stare to me, every time I hear it, I'm reminded why I like the song so much. And I listen to it more than Apologize. So I'm, I like it probably just as much, if not more. We're excited to tour Canada and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, take some of your beer back home with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're stoked. We're, we're excited to be here. I mean, and we're thrilled to have uh, hit number one in Canada. I was, I was in Toronto four years ago. I, an artist I just worked with had a number, he had like the number three or four song at the time, and I thought, man, I wonder if we'll ever have a number three song in Canada or something, and now we have a number one, so <laughs> we're thrilled.